so uh, mr prithijit majumdar is an architect and a bem professional having 10 years of diversified experience of the ac industry and he mostly uh, worked on bem project and is very proficient with softwares like autodesk revit navisworks and 3ds max and he has worked on international projects majorly in aviation and transportation sector he has hardcore experience in bem standards and bem implementation and on renowned project where the need to strategize and uh, cat to bem transformation was a primary agenda so he has worked on the projects like king abdullah international gardens national bank of kuwait grand theater dear abad morocco hinkley point c nuclear power station then in transportation new doha international airport riyadh metro doha metro singapore metro extension and of the state working on delhi metro plus implemented bem on uh, ananda development bangkok and singapore metro singapore so over to you, over to you mr prithiji you can uh, share your screen okay uh, thank you thank you so much sir and thanks a lot to capricorn and autodesk uh, and another uh, thanks to shweta uh, because he was the one who was uh, organizing all this uh, seminars and webinars so thank you all of uh, thanks all of you uh, for letting us to uh, be a part of this so anyways uh, i'll just start with uh, my presentation because uh, we are already running out of time so uh, as of now uh, what we are sharing is uh, that uh, like we are talking about leveraging technology to automate design processes uh, which is the topic today's topic and uh, what i'll be showing you guys today is i'll be showcasing a dmrc project and whatever we are uh, running through and working on in the dmrc project so uh, basically if uh, like uh, moving on to the first slide which is like i'm just showing uh, you guys like a uh, uh, interior uh, model and interior view and the exterior view of the dmrc station which we are uh, like creating right now uh, for the past one and a half years we have been working on this so it has taken like almost 6 to 8 months of design which was done in a cad uh, 2d platform so and then after 6 to 8 months we have uh, transformed from cad to revit bim we had faced a lot of difficulties in the initial stages uh, which i'll be talking about a little bit so moving on to the next slide which is uh, uh, here we have uh, basically contents of the whole slide which is uh, pre construction stage which is design design phase so first of all uh, the dmrc design stages consist of uh, conceptual design first design stage tender design good for construction stage so we have four stages before construction stage so as of now like uh, what we have done is we have done all the stages uh, in cad and then uh, we have followed uh, the same for the bim bim protocols also so after that i'll be talking about uh, level of details of bim models then use of bim csd as a common data environment advantages of bim csd docs advantages of bim csd design collaboration class detection reporting and resolution then i'll be also talking about uh, like bim models and submission to dmrc on bim csd so starting off with our main topic which is uh, dmrc session design stages so uh, at first we have conceptual design stage where we finalize the basic outer stage uh, outer shell of the design uh, the the building the station building where we uh, like try to uh, come up with some ideologies and frame out and like uh, conceptualize a facade design first and then try to like zone out the interior design design parts wherever the uh, technical rooms are there uh, the circulation Uh, will be possibly happening and the uh, like flow of the crowd footfalls actually so we have uh, finalized this in a conceptual design stage and then comes the first design stage where uh, we are like finalizing the basic design inputs and then uh, came up with uh, like a few schematic design uh, dra uh, dra uh, drawings where we have uh, followed the building codes and standards of nbc and all so then comes the tender design where we intend the drawings the design drawings in such a way that they can be submitted for tendering tendering purpose so for that uh, during this stage the structural design uh, and the mpf design uh, like design models have come into place because uh, we have to submit uh, like uh, collaborated and design coordinated uh, drawings for this stage for tendering purpose definitely so uh, after this tender design stage we have good for construction stage where we have uh, submitted all detailed drawings uh, this is the stage which we are presently on uh, working on right now so we uh, like 
we are in the world of submitting detailed drawings with all the details of each of the model elements which we are submitting uh, right now to DMRC uh, phase by phase and station by station uh, like uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we are basically we are trying to submit it on a weekly basis so uh, like the work is uh, on a high peak. We are working uh, day and night nowadays uh, due to this COVID stage and we are also doing work from home uh, to uh, like complete all the drawings and the designs and the models as of, as of now. So in the uh, uh, like uh, coming back to the BIM, uh, BIM uh, yeah, coming coming back to the BIM implications on this uh, stages, design stages, uh, what we have now is uh, whatever we have done, uh, the BIM innovations which we have implemented in the uh, CAD environment. Uh, as per DMRC's requirement, it was a mandate that we should submit all the design models in BIM, in Revit specifically, and in Navisworks also, along with the class detection, uh, class detection reports. So basically, I'll talk about uh, like monster design stage, which is LOD 100. Uh, so basically, we have uh, we had to create uh, some concept facade models with multiple design options, and we have showcased that to TMC to analyze and finalize the design uh, design feasibility. So uh, we have also done a internal zoning uh, as per the initial requirements uh, for the basic uh, like as per the design uh, basic design input. So what we have done here in Revit software. In the initial stage is like uh, we have come up with a project template which consists of a title block few templates project information initial families uh, like the basic families actually and uh, we have done done view setups grids levels and visibility settings for the initial schematic drawings and then comes the uh, project geo coordinates uh, which consists of uh, shared coordinates project base point and survey points and geo location coordinates so we uh, like it's the geolocation coordinates are as per the world coordinates. So we have placed our model in such a way that it aligns directly to the world coordinates. And then comes the project parameters and shared parameters. So in the initial phase, when we are coming up with the uh, concept design only, and when we are starting to work in the Revit environment, uh, so we have finalized uh, like the major project parameters and the shared parameters, which we'll be using on the later stage of the project. But these uh, parameters are a evolving stage. Uh, they'll keep on coming as uh, we move on with the project. And then uh, linking conceptual CAD drawings to the Revit and start creating models on, uh, based on initial inputs. So in the initial stage in the concept design, we have inserted all the CAD drawings and started building up the Revit models so that uh, we can finalize the grids and levels uh, to the like model external and model external facade and the internal zone, as, we, as I have talked about earlier. Then the next stage is uh, first design stage, which is LOD 200. So in this stage, what we have done is we have done a detailed, uh, like more, it's more detailed aligned to the uh, design requirements and the codes. Then we have the basic structural model and the basic MEPF model also uh, like in the initial inputs for this, this stage. So here, if I talk about Revit, uh, what comes up is uh, incorporating uh, CAD, CAD elements to the Revit model by converting CAD blocks to Revit, uh, Revit family. So basically, everything starts up with CAD because it's a basic 2D uh, uh, drafting and designing tool. So uh, by coming to Revit, we need the CAD as a base background upon which we can build up the Revit models. So, uh, like coming to the next point, which is placing Revit model elements as per CAD inputs, again the same thing. So, uh, we are like placing up the Revit model elements as per the CAD inputs upon the CAD drawings, when we have imported the CAD drawings in the Revit model. Then we have done an extensive use of view templates to control the multiple views, such as plans, elevations, sections, uh, because uh, like uh, we have a uh, like number of uh, like 10 drawings 10 basic drawings which we we have in the revit models which are basically plan section elevations so uh, like these 10 drawings are being like sent across to dmrc for review reviewing purpose and uh, like a dmrc has commented on those drawings and has sent it back to us so that we can upgrade our model as per their comments and then comes the basic schedules for lump sum quantities and counts in this final design stage also, we have done a basic uh, like a Revit schedules so that we can come up with some quantities and estimations and counts of uh, numerous uh, model elements. And then uh, like we had to submit this first design stage uh, to DMRC. For that also we, need, uh, we have created sheets 
and uh, like we have placed uh, views into the sheets and we have come up to certain standards so that we can submit it to uh, DMRC and we can fulfill the first design stage, design stage uh, like requirements as per our contract. And then coming back to like the next stage, which is tender design stage, uh, which I have already talked about, uh, it's, it's in a LOD 300 uh, format. And uh, this tender design stage is a stage where we have submitted design uh, drawings, detailed design drawings to DMRC so that they can forward it in such a way that that, that can be tendered and the contractors can be uh, on board upon bidding on this tender drawings. So uh, like uh, what I have done here, what we all have as a team have done here is we have come up with more detailed design uh, BIM models where we have done detailing, uh, detailing and adding of more parameters to the project families. And then we have uh, materials into uh, like put materials into specific layers like uh, walls, floors, ceiling, roof, etc. Uh, like uh, we have uh, done more detailing to the walls floors, ceilings and roofs so that it can be shown in the enlarged plans and the other plans so that it can be like uh, converted into a tender design stage drawings. Then we have also controlled the visibility and the object size of the model elements as per the client requirement so that it can be properly visible in the drawings which we have uh, submitted to DMRC. And then finalization of sheets for tender drawings with all submission standards incorporated. So there was few set of uh, standards and few set of requirements which was provided by DMRC while we were submitting the standard drawings. So uh, we have followed those drawings, we have finalized our sheets, and then we have submitted all these uh, drawings to DMRC. Uh, then the basic level of uh, design visual, uh, like there was a basic level of uh, design visual coordination and interference checks because we have to do our design coordination because we are submitting it for tender, right? And then comes the next stage, which is good for construction stage, which uh, we are currently prevailing at now, uh, which is LOD 350, where we are coming up with uh, GFC drawings. And uh, like we are using uh, uh, Revit models and Neversworks models, and Neversworks model exten extensively, extensively for uh, our flash coordination, flash detection, and design coordination as well. So uh, I'll just uh, tell you the, what guidelines we are following for that. So as the design, design is final now in this stage, the Revit model elements of all the disciplines are modeled as per uh, actual, actual details and locations. Design coordination and flash detection using Autodesk Telescope is used at full potential here. Uh, clash detection reports are shared to the modeling teams to resolve the clashes and publish clash models to DMRC actually. So use of BIM3C docs and BIM3C design collaboration between other disciplines and stakeholders on a regular basis. Uh, like we are doing this uh, design collaboration on a regular basis so that the design model is clash free and we can submit a clash free model to DMRC uh, that can be erected in site uh, without any issues on site. So then we are doing generation of uh, GFC drawings along with parent models and uh, admissible class reports uh, for submission to DMRC. Uh, what I will say is, uh, after doing class reports, we are having numerous number of classes. The major part of the classes which we can resolve are being resolved by us, and rest of the classes are admissible by DMRC because uh, there are few scenarios where we can't uh, like resolve those classes. Like in case, uh, like uh, when a pipe or a conduit is going through a wall, we don't uh, like it's it's going through a wall. We can penetrate the wall. We can cut a hole in the wall. But when it's going inside a wall. Uh, simultaneously or horizontally, we can't cut through the wall inside and we can't show it, show that in the model. Uh, it's a uh, like huge task, but we don't show it. So that, that kind of classes are uh, acceptable classes, admissible classes for DMRC. So DMRC admi admits those classes, approves them and finalizes the model in that case. So uh, the next is placing the individual session models into master alignment model for validation of geo coordinates in the BIM model. This is one more important state uh, because uh, like what we do is uh, we uh, like keep on like inserting our station models into the master alignment model uh, by which we can check and validate the location the geolocation of the uh, like our station model as per the main master alignment file in that like uh, it's it's placed in the world coordinates so that the station orientation and the location and the coordinates are as per the actual uh, like location which is decided by DMRC. 
So uh, then coming up to the last point, which is uh, like use of BIM 360 submission workflows for the models and drawing submissions to DMRC and other stakeholders. What we are using in the uh, BIM 360 is uh, we are using submission workflows uh, by which we can submit and issue our drawings to DMRC, which in turn DMRC will issue them to the contractors on board, so that the contractors can pick the drawings from the uh, from BIM 360 platform and they can like give a print or take it to the site and start constructing the whole building. So the next next part, I'll be talking about level of details of the BIM model, which I was talking about in the last slide also. Uh, this one is a little bit detailed, but uh, as we don't have time much, I'll just uh, like go through it in a hurry. So basically, LOD 100 is uh, like creating these multiple design options. It's a conceptual and a schematic designs uh, design model, which uh, we talk about LOD 100, which is the basic uh, like a basic beginning uh, of the design stage. So here we can also use it for uh, like a, a site analysis, a feasibility study, zoning of the project. And then comes the LOD 200 part, which is a preliminary design, which is like a little bit more detailing to the conceptual design. And then we come up with some uh, like few uh, finalized design options in the scene. And next stage is tender design. Uh, the tender design is basically what I have talked about earlier. Uh, this, this design stage consists of LOD 300 modeling. And in here, like we like run a basic level of clash detections and we finalize standard design drawings, which we submit to the client. And then comes the GFC stage, uh, which is good for construction stage. Uh, here we have a LOD of uh, LOD 350. Uh, this LOD 350 uh, is having like integration of further design, uh, detailed design uh, details into each and every model element in order to extract detailed GFC drawings. So basically the purpose of this GFC is to take out GFC drawings but for construction drawings so that that can be issued to the uh, client so that the client can issue it to the contractor and contractor can like uh, uh, do more detailing into it so that it can become a construction uh, documentation and construction model which we call uh, LOD 400 to 450. Uh, this construction drawings also consist of fabrication drawings, uh, tender drawings, uh, shop drawings of the like a uh, few specific elements, model elements, which are uh, done in more details by the subcontractors or the vendors of the contractor. And uh, finally, which uh, we land to LOD 500, which is as built. So this, uh, this stage, uh, we have the building models as per the physical building model, which with all the dimensions and all the adjustments made on site, which is uh, uh, recorded in the model and which is kept as a like a model which which can be used in later uh, part which uh, can be used as a uh, like a renovation of the uh, building so basically we have uh, different dimensions of bim which is uh, 1d 2d 3d 4d till 7d so basically 3d is the length with and height 4d consists of time which we do 4d sequencing timeliner uh, like to show the project schedule and the construction sequencing while uh, we are working on the project and the 5D comes under costing and estimation, uh, which we like in, uh, incorporate the uh, costing of the materials and the model. And the final output is the costing analysis. Uh, then we come come into 6D, which is analysis part. Uh, this 6D analysis part uh, consists of structural analysis, load uh, structural load analysis, and structural other analysis, as well as uh, MP element analysis, which can be optimized, which is used for basically design optimization. So that uh, once the uh, building has been made, building is constructed, and the services are done, the building works as per expectation. And then we comes, uh, come to 70, which is ONM, which is operation and maintenance. So the operation and maintenance is basically after the building has been built, we try to like incorporate all the like uh, working working data into the building model, where like uh, uh, uses of IOTs also come into place where we incorporate all the working data of the building and try to like uh, use it so that we can like uh, like uh, do a maintenance of the building elements in a proper way. So moving on to the next slide, uh, here we have a few rendered views uh, of the station, which we have done. Uh, all these renderings are part of Enscape 3D. So we have used Enscape as a rendering tool for our BIM models. Uh, and the next we have uh, this walkthrough, which I'll be showing. So this is the outer uh, You can see the facade is 
These are the materials prized by the uh, like And this carefully walked through is also made from MTFD, which is the plugin software, which we are currently using for all the systems that we have brought there. This is the stationary, having stages and elevators. Uh, escalators. Elevators are there in the back side. Uh, we have uh, ticket vending machines and the ticket counters over there. And then these are the security gates. So walking past the security gates, we have AFC gates, automatic fare gates, where we spike our cards and entry, enter into the station paid area. Uh, all the materials uh, you are seeing here has been like uh, like finalized by DMRC after having long distance as a common data environment. Uh, I would like to talk about a common uh, data environment, which is a common basic platform where uh, like, uh, we can access to upload the models, we can review the models, we can upload the model for the client to review it, and uh, the client can again uh, share it to the contractors, where the contractors can upload their models, and they, uh, then everyone can sit on a, a collaborative workshop where we can discuss about the like, models and the design elements. And whatever the clashes it can be, uh, like we, we are here to like resolve all the clashes and the design coordination issues can be resolved there in this common data environment. So here for this project, we have used a BIM CST for a uh, uh, common data environment. So here are a few like uh, like pros and uh, pro uh, like advantages of using BIM CST. So here uh, like we have used design collaboration, document management, and desktop connector. So design collaboration is used to like uh, collaborate our designs, which we are uploading on a daily basis. Then we have document management. Document management is also kind of a similar thing where we are uploading the documents or submissions. Like, and then we have desktop connector so that we can work on the Revit software and directly connect to the BIM cloud. Then uh, the advantages of BIM docs is like it streamlines, uh, streamlines project, uh, BIM project workflows, saves time, reduce, reduces risk, mitigates errors, in the construction projects, helps improve quality, safety, and commissioning for construction, supports lean construction practices, multiple project members working on the same file from various locations. Uh, work from home uh, became very easy uh, just with good internet connections, uh, like specifically during this COVID scenarios. Uh, work from, uh, then next is collaborative environment and uh, enables better design coordination. Visual QIQC became part of daily practice because uh, whatever model we are working on, we are working on them directly using our Revit. So anyone can uh, do a like visual QC on the models directly. Then uh, we have presentation. Uh, presentation to, uh, to clients turned out to be uh, really very simple in few clicks. And then submission delivery and approvals was totally simplified. Uh, just we have to do a few clicks and it gets submitted to the client. Then uh, the advantages of BIM CST design collaboration. Again, uh, when we are using design collaboration, we are trying to link it uh, 
like the file linking and collaboration for design collaboration uh, design coordination is very simple uh, when we are having many stakeholders and other vendors and subcontractors on board and all of them are working on the same platform it's a very uh, like a uh, hectic job but due to bill 3st and uh, like due to like uh, like all the protocols which we have set in the beginning all the protocols uh, was set by dmrc as well as we have set few internal protocols which helped us a lot to manage all this models and submission uh, during this whole scenario uh, then we have clash detection and reporting uh, and resolution also so the clash detection is done uh, in our model from architecture versus structure architecture versus mpf structure versus mpf and then we have done clash detection reporting which is like uh, all the reports out of which we have submitted to the internal teams and other stakeholders so that all these clashes can be resolved as soon as possible so that we can submit the final clash free models to dmrc and uh, the teams were uh, like employer uh, like teams were uh, teams were given all the clash reports they were shared with all the clash reports and the issues uh, we were following this clash matrix to resolve all the clash issues uh between all the different disciplines so that the clashes are resolved as soon as possible and uh, dmrc reviews the class free models along with the admissible clashes uh, and approves the model simultaneously so uh, finally we while submitting to dmrc we are following few workflows uh, like uh, from the, the workflow the first workflow is submission, submission of the model workflow and the second workflow is submission of the class free model workflow. so we are uh, when we are submitting the models we are using uh, model workflows to submit to dmrc and we are, when we are submitting the clash uh, free models and the clash reports the admissible admissible clash reports we are submitting through uh, a different clash a different workflow which is a clash review workflow so uh, finally uh, we are from ages we are working on dmrc project as of now and thank you everyone for being with us and for your support and over to farad yep um thank you mr prithvijit for uh, discussing in detail your uh, mega project uh, for metro and how you you know delivered on revit 